DID and similar disorders such as OSDD 1A and 1B are very complex disorders, more so than most people realize. When people think about DID, their first thought is usually alters. However, alters are just one part of what DID is. Another large part of it is the amnesia that comes with it. In DID, alters are separated by quote-unquote walls of amnesia and dissociation. I'm going to be focusing on the amnesia aspect in this video and some of the different ways that it can manifest. Before we get started, I would like to say that I am not a medical professional, I'm just someone who's done a lot of research, spent a lot of time around systems, and has quite a bit of personal experience. DID and OSDD are both very complex, very personalized disorders. What one person needed to survive will not be the same as what another person needed. That doesn't mean that any variations of what I'm describing means that someone is faking. To start off, I'm going to go over the terms used in the scientific community to describe some of the ways amnesia can present. I'm going to be giving very simple definitions and explanation of these, and I'm not going to capture the full range of how they can be experienced. Whenever talking about amnesia in dissociative disorders like DID, we are almost always talking about dissociative amnesia. Dissociative amnesia is dissociating from traumatic events after they happen, causing someone to forget the trauma they experienced. Dissociative amnesia is also a general umbrella term for many of the other terms, such as localized amnesia, selective amnesia, systemized amnesia, and generalized amnesia. Localized amnesia is the inability to remember a certain event. For example, if someone got into a car crash, their brain may blot out the event in order to protect them from that trauma. Selective amnesia is very similar to localized amnesia in that it describes the inability to remember an event, but in selective amnesia, someone can remember bits and pieces rather than totally forgetting. Where someone with localized amnesia wouldn't remember any part of the event, a person with selective amnesia might remember the ride to the hospital or how the car looked after the crash. Systemized amnesia is completely forgetting a specific category of information or a specific individual. For example, someone may forget their abuser after they get away from them. Generalized amnesia is completely forgetting everything about oneself, one's past, and one's experiences. I can't really give an example because it really is just forgetting everything. Another form of dissociative amnesia is dissociative fugue. This is a bit different from the other forms of dissociative amnesia I've been discussing. Dissociative fugue is a temporary state of memory loss where someone ends up in a place with no memory of how they got there. One moment they could be sitting at home, and the next they could be 15 minutes away at a random park with no memory of how they got there. The last term in this category is interidentity amnesia. This type of amnesia is exclusive to people with alters. In this kind of amnesia, when one alter is in control or in front, other alters are unable to remember what happened during that time period. This is the overarching term for amnesia between alters. Next, I'm going to be covering community-used terms to describe ways amnesia can manifest. This list is by no means exhaustive or complete, it's just some of the more common terms I've seen around. Some of these terms have alternate uses and meanings in other communities, but I'm focusing on how systems use these terms. The first term is blackout. A blackout is complete amnesia for a period of time. Usually this is in reference to switches, but not always. This is a very similar term to localized amnesia, but it doesn't exclusively happen during traumatic events. Grayouts, on the other hand, are having foggy memory for a period of time or only remembering bits and pieces of a time period. This term is also generally used in relation to switches, and like how blackout is similar to localized amnesia, grayouts are similar to selective amnesia. Moving away from terms that have a scientific counterpart, the next term is emotional amnesia. Emotional amnesia is when someone loses an emotional connection to an event. However, it can also be used to describe the disconnect of emotions between two alters. For example, one alter may lose something super important to them and be very upset about it, and when another alter comes to front, they may not understand why the previous alter was so upset or the connection they had to the item in question. Something that's well documented in DID is when one alter fronts and forgets learned talents and skills. For example, one alter may know how to draw, but another may not, or may have different skill level when it comes to drawing. There doesn't seem to be an accepted term for this, despite it being a very well-known and well-documented part of DID. I've personally taken to calling this skill amnesia. The next one is a bit difficult to explain. DID is an incredibly complex defense mechanism that's supposed to go unnoticed. Because of this, the brain will sometimes go to great lengths to hide symptoms such as amnesia from a system. In the community, this is referred to as 
amnesia of amnesia, when someone forgets or don't realize that they've lost time at all. All of these are different ways amnesia can present, but again, not all of the ways. Every system is different and will have differing ways amnesia presents itself. Even within the same system, amnesia can affect alters differently. One alter may experience blackout when the host fronts, and another may only have emotional amnesia of that same time period. This is known as asymmetrical amnesia. That's all I have for today. I hope all of this made sense. If you have any questions or additional inputs, please leave them in the comments below. I don't promise an answer, but I'll try my best. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.